So you are a non-Muslim, yes? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So where are you from? Um, I'm originally from England um, and my ethnic okay. background is Zimbabwe. Okay. So are you religious yeah. yourself? Um, y yes. Like, uh, I like to believe that I, I was pretty religious and I still am, but um, <clears throat> I'm sort of in a weird state right now because I've not taken my Shahada, but like, I pray a lot with like my Muslim friends and Muslim brothers and I do things like that typically Muslims would do now. Not all things, but like, for example, I make dua before I enter toilet and stuff like that and like okay. do things in Arabic and like um, practice certain things that are for Muslims. But I feel sort of like an alien in that sense because I still haven't taken my shahada, but mm -hmm. I don't really feel like a Christian in my heart now. And when people ask me what religion I am, I don't necessarily have an answer. <laughs> I say I'm a Christian, but I'm exploring Islam. That's like my... Okay. I go to the thing but i have some questions okay. okay so let me ask you a few questions and then you can ask your question i'll ask no, you very basic brother. questions you believe in what you believe in allah not the of trinity course. not the trinity no definitely not <laughs> yeah so you believe jesus is a messenger that was sent by god yes 100 uh, percent. and prophet muhammad sallallahu is a messenger of god and the quran is is the message from allah Azzawajal. yes peace be upon him yes Okay, so go ahead, ask your questions because you already have a belief of a Muslim, but I'll let you ask your questions so you say you have no obstacles stopping you. But go ahead, what is your question? Um, bef like around a year ago, one of my Muslim friends, Ayub, like introduced me to Dr. Zakir Naik, and I think that was the spark for me to, um, like obviously look into my conversion because for me i knew like there was errors in the bible but for me it was a whole okay. thing where i believe in god and i believe i have a strong relationship with god so mm -hmm. something such as religion why does that make the difference for me in terms of like going to hell or not or like understanding mm -hmm. certain things like the most important sh thing should be my relationship between me and god no and then um after i watched he just said he said to me brother let's just go upstairs yeah and just watch this one video of dr zach and i and he's just going through jail Genesis, and there was just so much just nonsense like I'm, I'm sorry to any Christian viewer here right <laughs> but it just my brain I suffered from like cognitive dissonance like it my brain was aching and then I would just watch people like Sheikh Asim Hakim or something like that yes, yes and like they would go on and I would watch like hour-long debates and for some reason every single video I watched they would not be it, you can't refute it. So for me alone, that's how I just know it's the word of God. It's literally impossible. Okay. And I would see people that I would uh, naturally believe are maybe have like a higher IQ level or might be more intellectually smart against the person with the power of the Quran. But for some reason, they still can't um, fight against it, right? Like there's this weird thing, like it's, it's almost like a divine power that's not allowing you to pass through that barrier because you can't fight against the word of God. But like I was thinking and and um, I remember, I forgot who it was. Um, I think he's a Saudi um, imam or sheikh. And he was talking about Prophet Muhammad's night journey and all of these different types of things. And he mentioned Ab uh, Angel Jibril, Angel Gabriel, like how forgiving God is and his mercy. And like a story of one of the pharaohs who, I forgot who it was. Um, maybe it was Ramses the first. I have no clue, to be honest. But he was like the most hated dictator like of all time, the most evil person anyone could be. And there's a story of when he died or something, he got thrown into the ocean and he was um god said like I, I loved him so much because angel gabriel came down and if you take the shahada just before you die and you say it with full sincerity and you actually believe it god said he will forgive anyone no matter how grave their sin is i understand what you say there's a few things i need to talk about like first this idea that allah Azzawajal sent angel gabriel to Fir'aun when he was dying Ramses the second when he was dying telling him that if uh, if you accept islam now i will forgive you that's not authentic so there's nothing in in the Quran or Sunnah. Oh, that says that, right? it's not authentic hadith. No, 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 it's not. Oh, and there's okay. nothing in the Quran and Sunnah that says that. Right? And the Fir'aun, mm. uh, the Quran actually clearly says the problem with Fir'aun. The Fir'aun, what he did is that Fir'aun claimed to be God, literally. Sure. He, he didn't just do shirk. There is the, 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 he just claimed to be God itself. You know? mm. He said, Ana rabbukum al -ala, and I'm your Lord, the Most High. Mm. And then all his life, even though uh, he was shown signs, and Allah mentions in the Quran that he, he shown many, many signs, the signs that Moses showed him when he came to him, he showed him many signs that Allah mentions in the Quran that are also mentioned in the Bible, but he still persisted in his disbelief. And he called Moses a liar. And he was trying to kill Musa alayhi salam and his people. Until Musa alayhi salam and his people were running away from Pharaoh, Fir'aun. And then they reached
reach the sea point. And then there was the famous uh, splitting of the sea happening by Moses, by, by the stick, by, yes. the, by the command of Allah. So the people of Musa alayhi salam said to him, Inna la budrakun. They were going to catch us. They're going to catch us. They're going to kill us. Then Musa alayhi salam said, Kalla. No. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. I have my Lord with me. Allah is with me and he will guide me the way. Then Allah azza wa jal said, Qul nadrib al al-bahr. We said, hit the sea with the with the with the stick and then in falaqa then it split and it was like two mountains of waves then when musa alayhi salam was crossing pharaoh followed them even though he's seeing this with his own eyes imagine look you all of this disbelief you see all of these miracles you see with your own eyes right now the sea is split to two parts two mountains and you still follow you want to kill musa alayhi salam after all of this he followed behind musa alayhi salam and then when musa alayhi salam crossed now the sea closed in on pharaoh and his people and he was drowning when he was dying now leave all of these stories about sand and all of that Nothing, nothing of that nature. When he was dying, he tried to say, I believe. But do you know, from the amount of arrogance, he didn't say, I believe in Allah. He said, I believe in the same God that the children of Israel believed in. Look how long oh. of a statement he made, right? He didn't even <laughs> yes. say, I believe in God. But because of his arrogance, he said, I believe in the Lord that the children of Israel believed in. Then Allah said to him, al an is it now when your soul is leaving your body and you dis disobeyed before and some scholars they say disobeyed before here is referring to him claiming to be God so weren't you claiming to be God yesterday now when your soul is leaving your body you're drowning you're trying to say that I believe so then Allah Azza wa Jal did not accept his repentance because there's a condition in Islam that Allah mentions in chapter 4 of the Quran the beginning of chapter 4 is the tawbah repentance is only for those who do the sins then they repent before their death and the repentance this is not for those who are their soul is leaving their body if your soul is now leaving your body now you already reached the point where you خلاص, you leave it soul is leaving your body it's too late now it's gone so there's no yeah. point of you now to say i believe it's already done you're dying yeah so your it's test in is islam. Over. exactly so in islam the test mm is open, the repentance is open until you're dying, your soul is leaving your body, which we call Sakarat al Maut, or the sun rises from the opposite side, which is the signs of the Day of Judgment, the, the, the end of time. It's also the test is over, it's the same thing. So unless mm -hmm. these things happen, the person has has a way to repent. But Pharaoh, he did not just not repent, but even in his death, as I said to you, uh, his amount of arrogance of disbelief, he claimed to be God. He saw the signs and he disbelieved in the signs. He tried to follow mm -hmm. Moses, even though he seen the signs, the, the, the sea spit in his own eyes, he doesn't care. He's still following them, trying to kill them. And he, when he was dying, his amount to, because of his amount of arrogance, he didn't even say, I believe in, in Allah or I submit to Allah mm -hmm. or anything like that. And therefore, that's why he was not saved by Allah. He's not, okay. His repentance was not accepted. So this is the story of Fra'aun, nothing of what you uh, you heard, basically. Okay. This is from no, the Quran, by the way. Yeah? This story I'm telling you yeah. is from the Quran, literally, right? The Quran. No, okay, yes, nice. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> if only I knew it wasn't an authentic hadith. <laughs> um, it happens. You can, yeah. But this is the thing I want to say to you brother look mm -hmm. this is the thing about listening to everyone because it's a problematic mm -hmm. in today's social media people think just because you have followers therefore you you know what you're talking about mm -hmm. there are people talking about everything today fitness talking about medicine talking about anything just make a youtube channel and they just call so you don't know the person's like did he actually study does he have qualifications you know what he's talking about he studies teachers or so it, it's a bit problematic to listen to just everyone and anyone which will lead you in the end to be confused like this you can hear confusing informations and then ending up being confused because of that information but anyways do you have any other questions yeah Inshallah, well, when you yeah, go ahead. When you finish your question, inshallah, when you accept Islam, I'll let you know the best channels to listen to to gain Islamic knowledge that are authentic and reliable. Go ahead. Thank you, brother. I like your channel a lot. Funny enough, um, <laughs> not too long ago, uh, you questioned my friend in public. He was the guy with the oh. blue hat and tattoos. And he was okay. with a girl. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, and uh, he was with me a couple of days ago. And I'm still questioning him on some things, uh -huh. but I think yes. uh, you you gave him more of a cemented belief in God, which is good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But, um, my other qu uh, question for you is: Say mm -hmm. someone took out a mortgage and forms of interest and loan and practice like riba, like um, they they endowed in like haram business in that yes, sense yes, before yes. taking a shahada. Uh -huh. After, let's say they take their shahada, would they uh -huh. now need to like cancel off their mortgage? Would they have to stop their business? Because I understand if you're Muslim and you have obviously haram money, like it's always haram, like no matter what you do with it. Like, mm -hmm. so in that sense, 
would the person have to stop that? Like, how would things work? Would you, what would you do with a mortgage? Say, if you've got a, a house on a mortgage and you've, okay. you've converted, what well, what would be the process in that? Okay, now you're asking a bit of difficult questions now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, look, so regarding the mortgage thing, if a person engages in mortgage or engages in interest in rate, but out of ignorance, when he learns that that thing is wrong, he's allowed, whatever was done in the past, is allowed to keep. Allah Azza says in the Quran, فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفَ وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ mm. Then whatever happened before, learning that this is the truth you can keep that but from now you have to leave the riba yeah okay yeah all you who believe fear allah and leave that which remains from your interest if you are believing mm -hmm. so you have to mm -hmm. leave interest so now if you are in a middle of a contract what you can do is you pay everything now whatever is left you pay all in full to get out of that and then you can keep the house because whatever happened in the past is left but from now we try to pay everything for example if you are in the middle of a mortgage or something like that you try to get out of an, an interest contract now after you learned what was the truth so if you didn't mm -hmm. know and you engage in interest then whatever happened in the past allah Azzawajal, out of his mercy he allows you to keep that thing but from now you stop you don't engage in interest you don't deal with with about interest in any way shape okay thank you very much for makes that sense. answer uh, yeah it makes complete sense it mm -hmm. makes sense then i've got another one which is the the compromising of dino vadunya in regards to uh, for example i'm a filmmaker and i'm yes. really into art and i like the creative field and like when okay. i started looking more into islam and finding the beauty of islam and everything just makes perfect sense of course which it would because it's god alhamdulillah there's been this thing in me that makes me feel like I can't necessarily even create art anymore unless I make nature documentaries because mm. as a filmmaker I want to make loads of different types of films and like whether it's drama action or whatever like even like the clothing of a, a, a of women in a film even uh, men like navel to the knees right for example like there'll be something let's say I don't include sex let's say no kissing scenes let's say none of that there'll be still so many things that will be classified as haram and something so such as a film, even if in a normal standard, right? Although arguably it could still be haram. Like there's like music, for example, like score, like a soundtrack, like that alone just makes the whole film essentially completely haram. And it's like the only thing like that I think if it, when I would, when I would be the type of person to be ready to take my shahada, like let's say I give up music, let's say I give up any, everything like in terms of my worldly desires that I know I could give up something such as art. I feel like, of course, like in terms of genre, it's incomparable, but like that's one thing here on this earth is something that I feel like I would be fighting for like forever like I wouldn't necessarily know other than people would just say pray that's the best thing that you could do I'm I'm assuming so like I pray for God to give you the strength to leave those things but it's like if you know in your heart maybe like that's what you feel like you should do or somewhat related to your purpose in life other than submitting your will to God of course how would one necessarily balance those two different things if you didn't want to make nature documentaries on animals <laughs> For example. Okay. So when it comes to music, there is no disagreement in this issue. Like musical instruments are haram. If you hear anyone of telling course. you disagreement and this and that, <coughs> then they don't know what they're talking about because the evidence is on this issue mm -hmm. is crystal clear. Regarding now where, how you can deal with things, what you can do, what you cannot do, and all of these things that you're saying. Look, there's a verse in the Quran where Allah Azza says in the Quran, there's a command for us believers to say, Qul inna salati, say my prayer, wa nusuki, the acts of worship that I do, wa mahiyaya, my life, wa mamati, my death, lillahi rabbil alameen, only to Allah Azza la sharika lah, there is no partners. And this is what I was commanded and I'm from the Muslims, right? So Allah says in the mm -hmm. Quran, look, there's one thing you understand. When I say something, purpose other than, there is no other purpose other than. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Th this is the reason why we're in, in this life. We are in this life to obey Allah Azza wa We are in this life to follow the commands of Allah Azza wa There are clear prohibitions that Allah Azza wa said do not do. Why did Allah Azza wa say do not do these things? Because they are not good for you. If Allah said do not do them, then there is no good in them. No matter how much you love them. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, you might love something and it's bad for you. You might hate something and it's good for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. So I can love something which is terrible, horrible. I can love something which is evil, bad for me. And I think it is good for me, but Allah knows best. And that is the point about submission. I'm a Muslim, I'm a submitter, I'm submitting to Allah because I know Allah knows best. And when he says to me, that's not good, then that's not good. Of course, as we said, you can do these films without the music, without the haram scenery. You can do, but you're not going to be able to include these haram things. I, can, I cannot give you a free pass and I say, brother, okay, look, I'm now going to play the legislator now, you know? I'm going to play it on behalf of God now. I'm going to tell you what you can and what you cannot do. No, no one can mm. do that. And if anyone does that, then they are now 
committing an act of disbelief because they're trying to legislate with Allah. Allah already legislated what is right and wrong. The religion is perfect, it's complete. 1,400 years ago, what we can and what we cannot do. Now, how many things are halal permissibly you can do? Countless. Yes. But our, our, this is our nature as, yeah, this is our nature as human. We focus on the things which are not good, not allowed. It's our, our evil okay. nature sometimes as humans, you know? We try to focus yes. on the things that Allah says, don't do. You focus on that thing, you know? Allah has allowed mm -hmm. you, Azza He's allowed you to do so many things. Focus on those things which are haram. And He's prohibited mm -hmm. you from things because this life is a test. To prohibit you from engaging mm -hmm. into the, these things. But take things a step by step. Whatever you're going to do, it should not be a reason to stop you from accepting Islam. Because there is no mm -hmm. worse sin than not taking your shahada. Because if you die now, you enter hellfire. If you accept Mm. Islam and you do sins and you die, you still punish, but you go to to paradise in the end. So nothing should stop a person from taking that step, even if there is some issues that he might still struggle with. You know what I'm mm. trying to say? Should not be that should of not be a reason to, to stop you from taking the step. Makes sense. No, of course. Thank you. Um, I think my my like final question would be uh so like I think when I take my shahada inshallah very soon, I now, would inshallah. definitely be uh <laughs> I'll definitely be um, Sunni, right? Okay. But I still don't understand. So I've watched like a couple of videos, like a couple of debates between Sunnis versus Shias. I still don't know what Sunnis are, what they believe. All I know is like there's something about like 12 like li lineal um, families or something like that of imams and like something where like some people say they commit shirk because they go to pray to people's graves or something like that like i don't well, i don't know yeah. what a shia is like i i still don't know the difference between sunni and shia and i can't find something that's clear with clarity and, to, and something that's concise that explains the difference right especially when when i look at some of these videos they talk a lot in Arabic. They mention a lot of Arabic things, a lot of cultural references as well that like I don't necessarily understand. So if you could um, clarify these things for me, even though. Yeah, I, I would I advise. Yeah, I would advise not to get into that. That's what I would generally advise, because as a new Muslim, you should focus on the foundations mm -hmm. of the faith, not on the on the things that are branches that people might disagree upon. As long as you don't do the certain things that some Shias do. Like, for example, would you pray to a dead person, ask help from a dead person? Would you do that? No. Does that make any sense? No. Yeah, that's no. I know that's one of the things. Hell okay. No. Yeah. yeah. Would you beat? Would you beat yourself because someone was killed someday? You no. start beating yourself. Would you do this? Thing? But these are the things. The, the reason why I want to understand this, right? I know obviously I should focus on the five pillars of Islam first. Mm. For example, believing in one and only God, and believing that Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger, peace be upon mm -hmm. him. Um, your five prayers a day all of these different types of things like charity uh, be charitable all of these yes. different types of things right but it's like for me like one of the reasons as well that like i think um that i like islam is like the intelligence like the wisdom of the quran like all the different types of knowledge and the miracles in the quran so like for me it makes no sense like, i don't understand how someone could be sorry about that someone could That's be right. sure if it clearly directly says in the quran do not harm yourself uh, uh, right? so, look, like, look how can someone uh, the question yeah, yeah the question is how can someone worship a cow but it's very now, different alone, no? Yeah, yeah no 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 no. I, I want you to think about these ideas now how can someone mm. not just worship a cow but literally eat the excrement that comes out of a cow why does that happen is the question why would someone by the way some okay. of these people have phds you know they they, they go they went to space <laughs> according to them so I why think, would they do these things i think the difference is okay let's for example take hindus i don't specifically know it in detail correct me if i'm wrong anyone but like with hindus there was a thing with magic mushrooms from the the cow uh, dung and then they ate and then they believed these cows held supernatural no, 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 no. powers deities or it's pantheism yes it's the, 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 okay. they believe that everything is god including the cows including everything in creation so they believe that, that these things are actually god okay so but within that right it's like for me i think once you like know about islam and you know it's the truth right like you understand the power of the Quran, like you know you've got that feeling inside of you it's like innate you you just know it's the truth right once you actually truly know but they right? don't What's they the, don't but that's the so thing then, look look so the Shias, what happens, look, let me explain to you how, how, how it happens in Shia circles. If you're born okay. in a Shia cultural tradition, you're mm -hmm. born and the whole religion for you has nothing to do with the Prophet ﷺ, has nothing to do with following the Quran, has nothing to do with following the, the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The whole religion for you is about what happened between 
two individuals in history about leadership. This is a whole religion for you. The whole religion for you is to curse some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, to curse the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. The whole religion for you is to call upon the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ who's dead and ask him for help and seek aid from him and believe he has supernatural powers and believe he cannot do anything wrong and he's never done anything wrong. This is what they're taught since they're young. So the thing is, they're not mm. taught Islam to begin with, brother. Mm. Therefore, it's not like they've understood the clear, clear idea of Islam. If you if you bring me Shias now, I'll show you they don't know anything about the Quran. Nothing. If they were reading the Quran, they would not curse the companions because the Quran praises the companions. If they were reading the Quran, they cannot say anything about the wife of the Prophet because the Prophet says that they are our mothers. You understand? Mm. So if they were reading the Quran, they will understand that they need to follow the companions. The fact is they don't read the Quran. And they're uh, quote unquote scholars. There are many videos on the, uh, of them on, uh, on YouTube. They're not able when they are not able to read basic uh, surahs of the Quran. The first few surahs, they're not able to read them. They're making mistakes. These are scholars of the shit. They're not normal ones, they're scholars. So when you've got people who have been raised upon complete ignorance, upon um, emotional stories, whatever they're told in every Jum'ah and every Jum'ah prayer, you tell them a story with one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, he killed the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, this fake story that they made up. This is the religion for them. The, the, yeah. This is literally it. In their books, if you read, the religion for them is to oppose the people of Ahl Sunnah. That's it. There's no religion of follow the Quran, follow the Hadith. That's not the religion. So in your mind, you're thinking that they're learning the Quran, the Sunnah, and the, the prophetic teaching. Yeah, I, ju I just <laughs> think they just happen to be a different sect. No, 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 like no, they no. Still work. Okay, okay. It's a lot more oh. deeper than that. And I'll send you a, vi a video to watch on detailed on this issue. Okay. But I just, I'm just no. giving you a basic point of view now of, of how it is on, and why, why it is the understanding that they follow, you know? That's why I said I don't want to get you too much into So you don't get confused by this and this and that. If you focus on the Quran and, and, and following the Prophet ﷺ, that should be more than enough for you. But as I said, I'll send you a video if you're interested to go into even more yes, depth into this sure. idea, right? Okay, okay so thank you. ready to take it, accept Islam now? <laughs> <laughs> I still think like... For me, like, inshallah, I know I 100% will. And it was okay. um, it was a thing where, like, with, um, of course, I could die tomorrow. God forbid. Astaghfirullah. But mm, tomorrow is not even promised for me. My next minute isn't. But it was a thing where I was going to go with my friends, because currently I'm studying abroad, and go to the mosque. And it will be a whole actual thing, because people want to see Wh When is that. the date? When is the date? Uh, next year, inshallah, when I graduate. So, like, no, just after that, I graduate. No. no, no, no. I can't allow you to do that. If you say, you know, if you said to me next week, I'll say, brother, go do yeah. it. But seriously, yeah, yeah, if you said to me next week, I would go, I'll just say, okay, go do it with your friend. But to say one year, brother, that is a huge. No, not, 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 not one year, as in the next year, early next year. The not next year, you mean 12 uh, after after December, you're saying basically? Yes, after December. It's still sure. a while, brother. It's still a long time. Look, what it, I can say to you is this. Is. What I can say to you is this. Take your mm -hmm. shahada and then take it again on that day with your, with your friends. I don't see a problem in doing that. But the reason I say take your shahada is to guarantee yourself that if you die, you do not end up in hellfire. You understand? So saying the shahada is not for, for this person or that person. Or, it is to guarantee if anything happens to me today, I have at least testified to I believe in my heart but to say that tomorrow next year next week next i would not advise that because you're already practicing islam you're already saying the dua before you enter the the, the you're doing certain things that probably some muslims are not doing <laughs> like to that extent so when you are to yeah. that extent learn that you pray with your friends you do all of that you're already practicing islam it would not make any sense to waste all of those deeds because allah will not accept any deeds from you unless you're a muslim it is point really it is, is that true absolutely absolutely allah says so clearly no. in the quran what prevented them from their charity to be accepted except that they don't believe in allah and his messenger so allah would not accept the actions of the individuals uh, because it's a condition for the acceptance of the prayer or the acceptance of the deeds is that you be a muslim but how would that work for example say um is a muslim man and that i know muslim men are allowed to marry women of the abrahamic faith right yes. for example and if you had a christian wife or would are you basically saying they could marry a christian wife or the, well known that their christian wife would never go to heaven and in, in regards to that in regards to that i That's thought a completely that like, different question, of, yeah, yeah, go ahead. um sorry I, I maybe i'm a bit confused but i no, thought no, it's okay. people of the ummah so people of prophet muhammad's the ummah they would uh a hundred percent uh end up eventually going to heaven even if they have to pay for their their sins at one point i could who? be mistaken who? Who? Uh, the ummah like people of uh, like muslims or people within prophet muhammad's uh yes yes the muslims the yeah now. will end up yeah, yeah, yeah. muslims yes. will end up yeah going to paradise yes, yes. But, but like I, I thought people of abrahamic faith 
um, still have the chance to go to heaven, even if they were not no, Muslim. No. Or is that no, 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 no. So, no. so every single person who is no, no, not Muslim. no, no. It's not like this as well. It's not like this. Let me explain. Look, Allah okay. Azza says in the Quran explicitly, clearly in chapter three of the Quran, in the in the Allah Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. And Allah says, "Woman yabtaghi ghair al Islam din an falan yuqbal min." Whoever seeks in a religion other than Islam will not be accepted from it. Allah first says, "Those who say that the Jesus is is." Is Allah have disbelief? Those who believe in the Trinity has disbelief. Then Allah quotes Isa alayhi salam saying, "Oh my people, worship Allah alone. Whoever associates with Allah, then Jannah is haram for him. Jannah is forbidden for him. And his abode is hellfire. And they will not have any supporters, the wrongdoers. So it's crystal clear in the Quran that people who disbelieve." Prophet ﷺ said explicitly that no Jew or Christian that would hear about me and not believe in that which what I was sent with except that he enters the hellfire. How can it get more explicit than this? Clear cut explicit statement of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, is everyone going to end up in hellfire? No, the people who heard the message, who know the truth after hearing the message and disbelieve in it are the ones who go to hellfire. People who did not get the message delivered to them, those have a different mm -hmm. test on the Day of Judgment. Because not everyone necessarily okay. heard the true message of Islam. That's based on the Quran yeah. as well, chapter uh, 17 of the Quran, verse 50. Now Allah says, we're not going to punish our people until we send them a messenger. But the point is, the, marrying a Christian, yes, you marry a Christian, but you marry a Christian for what purpose? You marry a Christian for the purpose of trying to bring her closer to Islam. Because the man is the leader in the relationship. The man is the leader in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Women are, are are generally, uh, uh, they follow the lead of the man. That's why women are not, per it's not permissible for them to marry an Muslim man. So that is one of the purposes for an individual to marry. It's not for their beauty and all of what certain people do. It's not for that. Mm. So uh, yes, you can marry her and call her to Islam and no problem. Allah has allowed you to do that. And the children will listen to you. You are the, the head of the relationship. They will take your religion as they do most of the times, take the religion of the father. But mm -hmm. None of that is related to you now, brother, right? None of that is related to you now. Taking that step and dying upon the truth now, because this is that's why I was telling you that, look, no religion will be accepted from you except Islam. And you have to testify with the truth. You know already, I'm sure you already know, you have to say the shahada. You need to testify with the truth. Allah says, Illa man bil wa hum Except those who testify with the truth knowingly. Mm. So you have to testify with the truth you have to say what you believe in your heart because the deeds you're doing my brother i don't want them to go to waste and i don't want you to say in the next year and you're not alive in the next month and you're not alive in the month after the next month allah Azzawajal knows but it has to come from you look if you are someone who do not know about islam i will not tell you to take the shahad but you're not only someone who knows about islam believes in the tendencies of islam you're someone who's practicing the tendencies of islam every day <laughs> like so like you you're, you're doing probably more than some muslims so it would not make any sense for you to look be praying be doing all of the duas be Pray, believing that Allah, uh, He's the only true God, Jesus is only a prophet of God, believing in the Quran, believing in everything, but not taking that step and saying, okay, I'm going to do that next year. No. My advice, brother, is you do it for yourself, is to guarantee if you die, at least you died upon the truth. And no one is saying, don't go with your friends. No one is saying, do not go to them. Go. No problem. Go again with your friends. You want to do it again in the masjid where people are around you? No problem. You can do that. But you have to do it before as well if you know it's the truth. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. No worries. Um, okay. Um, my last thing to you uh, okay. before we continue is, <laughs> yes. so does that mean, because you said none of the deeds are counting out, does that mean every single good deed I have done until uh, upon now, say I was to take my shahad, would not count? But this is the thing. If I, you accept Islam, they I would thought, count. If you accept Islam, they would count. Uh, okay. That's the thing. <laughs> right because as okay. we said you need to understand it's a condition for you to be a muslim so once now that condition is fulfilled the good deeds in your past yes. are there okay the prophet Islam, he said to one of the, the companions aslamta you become a Muslim and all of the deeds that you've done good are there. But mm. you have to accept in order for that condition to be fulfilled. Do you understand? So once you yeah, accept Islam, sense. yeah. So once you accept Islam, then there is no, no issues, no problem. Okay, now your deeds are accepted. The deeds that you've done in the past because the condition is now fulfilled of faith, of belief. Now the condition is fulfilled. Now all of these deeds are there in your slate of good deeds as well. No, it makes okay? complete sense. You ready to do it? Okay. Sure, let's go. <laughs> okay, fair, inshallah. let's do it. Okay, say after. I'm sure you already know it anyways, but we'll say inshallah. You want to do the yes. Arabic first or the English first? Um, we can do Arabic first. Okay, let's do then. Ashadu. Ashadu. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Amen. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasul. Rasul. Allah. Allah. You see the brother, it's very simple, it's very easy. Like, we say the same thing in English now as well. I testify. I testify. There's nothing worthy of worship. There's no God worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify. At Prophet Muhammad. 
the Prophet Muhammad. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. And servant. And servant. Alhamdulillah. That's it, brother. That's it. Subhanallah. Look, they are look over two thousand five hundred people, two thousand six hundred people watching. They're all happy for you, mashallah. They're all saying Allah Akbar, alhamdulillah, mashallah. They're all happy for you. Wallahi, brother, alhamdulillah, you took that step because wallahi, look, we gamble with things we shouldn't be gambling with. I know. You I've been, to be honest, I've been not putting it off to say because it's not necessarily a putting it off thing, but it's like I, I wanted to believe in my heart because I was gonna take it like a hundred percent. That's why I believe in my heart. If I, if I was dead destined to live another three, four months. But it's something that I, I wanted to to feel super special. But within what you said and understanding, even though it's just a sense of denial in my brain, it's special within itself. It doesn't need anything Absolutely. else. Right. So like, I, and I know this, but it's just, you know, me it's being literally, human. you know, it's literally given the rights of Allah to Allah. It's literally saying outwardly to everyone that there is nothing that is worthy of my worship except Allah. Mm. There is no real creator. There's no real God. Nothing else else is worthy of your devotion and worship except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is, mess is a messenger of God is a servant of God that was sent by him and this is a message yeah. that came from him and I accept it and I believe it what is more special than that it is literally you applying that in your life you understand brother so I know sometimes oh, yeah. it's also because you come from a Christian background and a lot of people think about the baptism and being in the church and all of these different things they, they think it's like it has to be like this no it's how it was at the time of the Prophet a person came and literally he said to the Prophet I, I testify that you are the Prophet of God and that's it and they enter into the fold of Islam because most and foremost it's about your belief and now you're mm. verbalizing mm. that which you believe which makes it the most special you know alhamdulillah no. brother as I said Allah no. brought you for a reason today you know you came for a reason and you said that story for a reason and you said what you said for a reason because Allah wants you to do it today he wanted to give you that no. chance because wallah as I said to you we gamble with things we shouldn't be gambling especially in this day and age you, you have statistics if you look in the UK one of two people dying from cancer mm. you got yeah. people they just wake up and the next day they're dead or they are in the bed they're dead you don't even know if you're going to no. wake up tomorrow or not. We would have certain, yeah, we have certain disease. We don't know. You walk in by, a car hits you. We are in a dangerous country. You have the highest rates of stabbing. As you know, London has the highest yes. rates, one of the highest rates in the world. So we 100%. shouldn't be gambling with these type of things. Absolutely. If we know is the truth, we move ahead and we take that step. Alhamdulillah. And I'm very happy for you, brother. Ask Allah Azza wa to keep you firm on the truth. And yeah, alhamdulillah for your sins are forgiven. As long as you keep in practicing and doing what you're doing, you know, don't worry about the pre previous sins as well. And as I said, you want to go again to the mosque, go to the mosque. Not No one is stopping you, brother. But at least now you know, Alhamdulillah, you've done what you needed to do. The Shahada, if anything happens to you, you already testify to Allah Azza wa Jalla, He's worthy of worship, and you're following Allah Azza wa Jalla. Thank you, brother. Okay, brother, can Thank I do you, anything brother. for you? By the way, look, you have, you seem like you have a lot of Muslim friends. I don't know if you need me to connect you with anyone. If you do, you just send me your details. I don't mind to connect you with people, but it seems like you have so many uh, people, right? Yes, uh, that would be great. I'm sure you might know people that can give you even more wisdom. It's fun Alhamdulillah. funny because um, I think a couple of days ago, I DM'd you, like I've been with content for months now, to be honest, right? Like I watch a lot of your content. I, I really like it, especially when you challenge <laughs> certain people that like, like think of what they're talking about and clearly they don't. But you asking if I could ask these questions, they don't know how it worked. And then I randomly went on YouTube to just watch like random stuff. And then I saw you alive and then you explained literally how to join the life. So clearly God guided me to you today, which I'm grateful for. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah brother. Alhamdulillah. Which is, is very, okay, very please nice. But yeah, um, please DM me again me if you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, DM me again. DM me again uh, with, on Instagram or, or Twitter or something like that. And inshallah, I'll get back to you. Mm. I'll connect you with people. And then if you have questions, you can ask me there as well, inshallah. Yeah? Thank you okay, very brother. much, brother. Well, I'm happy for you. May Allah Azza bless you and keep you on the truth, inshallah. Yeah? I'll let you go, Thank inshallah. You. Yeah? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam.